Instagram is not reality. We know this. But these four words have been at the center of debates about the impact of social media on mental health for over a decade now. We're well aware of the addictive nature and self-confidence issues that can arise from apps, be it Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, and so forth. Gen Z, those born after 1996, have only known life online, and they are suffering serious consequences because of that. As you can see here, US data now shows a stark rise in rates of teen depression over the last decade, particularly for girls. But, as has been well reported, tech companies already know this. According to Facebook's own research reported by the Wall Street Journal, their platforms make body image issues worse for one in three teenage girls. And among teens who report suicidal thoughts, 13% of British users and 6% of American users traced those feelings to Instagram. Jonathan Haidt is a social psychologist who, in a recent article in The Atlantic, unpacked this correlation between teen mental health and social media. He explored why he believes that girls are more vulnerable to the harmful impacts and is now calling on lawmakers to pass urgent legis legislation on the matter. And he joins me live now from New York. Jonathan, great to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Bianca. So let's start with the fact that we've known for a long time um, relatively speaking, that social media can have a really negative impact on mental health. But obviously, as each year goes by, we get more data. So what are we sure of now that we weren't before? So there have been studies uh, for a long time, but psychologists and scientists tend to have this very high standard of proof. We're not going to publish something unless we're sure, unless we have a lot of confidence. Um, and uh, there are a lot of studies showing a correlation of time use on, on social media with bad mental health. But some scientists say, well, we can't be sure. This is, this is not a big effect. And what I'm trying to do is show, actually, there are a lot of different kinds of evidence. And the preponderance of the evidence, that is, the majority of the evidence, does seem to show that Instagram is causing harm to girls. And why girls in particular, do you think? So all teens are glued to their phones. As soon as, you know, when my son was two, he, he figured out how to use uh, use his iPhone. And, and the fact that I didn't buy Apple stock back then, uh, I'm still kicking myself. So all kids love it. But the boys, as soon as they go online, they're on video games. And video games put them into teams to compete, which is actually pretty healthy. Girls gravitated towards the visual social media platforms, primarily Instagram, but also uh, Pinterest and uh, now TikTok. Um, so the girls go for the visual things, and that's much more about performance. It's not play, it's performance. And that, of mm -hmm. course, women are going to do that, men are going to do that, but 12-year-old girls should not be spending their days performing for other girls. They should be playing and talking and learning. And, and Jonathan, on that subject, one of the big changes that we've seen over the last couple of years when it comes to Instagram in particular, which according to your article is the most damaging for teenage girls, is this um, surge in filters that aren't just, you know, like weird ears or, or funny things you can put on your face, but actually change your facial features and can, can amend insecurities you have about yourself. In fact, take a look at this. So my producer and I earlier were fiddling with um, a selfie that I took of myself in our office and then just showing how easy it is just to shorten your nose, take away any bags under the eyes that you get from working in news, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, this is so easy to do. And how much, how much does this contribute to the poor yes. mental health in teenage girls? The fact that you can literally Photoshop yourself very easily. Yes. The answer is, we don't know how much that is the cause, but I suspect that that's one of the biggest features. When mm -hmm. I was young, we all talked a lot about how girls are subject to seeing all these airbrushed models in the magazines. Okay, but you kind of know that's, you know, that's, that's fake. Those are strangers far away. The fact that your friends all look much more beautiful than you because they look much more beautiful than they really are means that almost all girls feel below average. So I do think that these filters, and many girls have written to me about this, about how sick it is and how they get sucked into it, how they, 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 can't, they can't appear unless they've facetuned. There's a thing called facetune, I think it is. Um, so yes, I think all of this is just terrible for 11, 12, 13-year-old girls. Girls going through puberty, it's the hardest time of life, and we should really be protecting them from predatory business models that put them into competition with each other. And from a psychological perspective, even if we're told Instagram's not reality, all the celebrities and people you see are editing what they look like, making themselves look better, mm -hmm. even if we know that intellectually, what is happening subconsciously if we're just exposed to those images all the time, even if we know they're not real, but it is all we see? 
So I'm a social psychologist and I look at the ways that we are so tuned to what other people are doing. And the fact that we know something consciously, that's like a little bit of the brain over there on the front left side. It doesn't really matter. Knowing that it's fake has almost no impact on whether it affects you and makes you feel ashamed or proud. Um, so we're all very social creatures. We're all very irrational creatures. And this is even more true for 11 and 12 year old girls. And is there any chance that these statistics that we're, we're seeing now are skewed by the fact that Gen Z and like the younger generation today are more comfortable discussing their mental mm -hmm. health struggles, that there's less of a stigma. So perhaps, you know, my generation or older may have been less likely to admit that they were going through something. But today, people are more likely to say yes in the survey, I am having difficulty. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, so the huge surge of mental illness uh, for girls began in 2012, 2013. And for the mm -hmm. first three or four or five years, a lot of people said just what you said. They said, oh, come on, this is just self-report. This is just, they're, asked, they're saying this on a survey. That doesn't mean they're really depressed. Um, and when I wrote the, the, my first article on this, The Coddling of the American Mind in 2015, we thought maybe that's what was going on. But then we got access to the data on hospital admissions for self-harm. These are girls who were checked into a hospital because they cut themselves, non-suicidal self-injury. And we also see the same trends for actual suicide, especially for young girls, for 10, 11, 12 year old girls. So this is not just that they're saying they're in trouble, they're cutting themselves and killing themselves. It, it, and the rate has doubled, it's up more than 100% since 2012. Wow, so irrefutable. Well, Jonathan Haidt, we really appreciate you coming on the program and sharing your research with us. We'll have to get you on again to find out what legislation might actually help the problem that we're seeing. Thanks so much.